Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans 12 Days of Reviews. Back during my spooktacular toy review series, I took a look at my first Rebor Club Selection set in the form of Lock, Stock, and Barrel, the Velociraptor Triplets. Now whereas going off of the name alone may have been a bit of a stretch for that to qualify for a Halloween piece, today's offerings are 100% perfect for the holidays. It's Rebor's Hatchling Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus Rex, nicknamed Jolly and Rudy respectively. Although if you ask me, they should have named the T-Rex Comet. Among their earliest club selection releases, what makes Rudy and Jolly fun is that they were the first in the line to be released with a festive add-on that you're able to include in your display depending on the time of year. Rebor would take this idea forward with their Stegosaurus Clover, who was given a four-leaf clover to tie into St. Paddy's Day, and Hurricane, the hatchling Baryonyx, who was given a soccer ball, I assume to celebrate the World Cup whenever that comes around. As for Jolly here, you get a nice Santa hat to put over her frill, while Rudy comes with some antlers attached to a headband, which lets you add a little Christmas cheer to your setup. And since this makes them such an obvious choice for 12 days of reviews, I'm gonna give you guys another dose of Double Trouble today, and take a look at both. So here we go, it's Killer Shrew fans, 12 days of reviews, and this is Rebor's club selection Rudy and Jolly, the hatchling Tyrannosaurus Rex and Triceratops. But before we get to the figures themselves, we first have to talk about the bases. Each of them comes with its own unique earthy base, complete with a faux wooden stand and single attached eggshell. Rudy's base features more of a sandy texturing, forming a deep divot for the egg to sit in, and it is painted in a light tan color with golden breakups and darker washes, while the wooden stand has been painted a deep brown. The underside then bears the company logo, the piece's title, and a number indicating which copy out of a thousand you have. In my case, 257. Meanwhile, Jolly's base has a much more compact, earthy appearance, and the paint features some lighter washes to go along with the lighter toned stand. The underside then features all of that pertinent information, including the special number out of a thousand, this time 857. Installing the eggs on these bases is pretty straightforward. All you really have to do is guide them into these slight dugouts and you're good to go. Although perhaps some pegs would be useful to ensure that they don't get dislodged and take a humble from your shelf. That being said, whereas Rudy's is pretty cut and dry, the lack of a peg does afford you some options with Jolly given the angularity of the base and the positioning of the baby dinosaur. The dugout has a slight incline to it which allows you to angle Jolly more upward or more parallel to the ground depending on how you choose to install her. Overall, the combination of the horizontal egg with the slight raise in the base beneath the vertical hatchling creates a very well balanced and pleasing display that guides your eye up from the stand and along the egg to the emerging jolly. All told, it's a lot more interesting to look at than a simple vertical egg in a ditch with a dinosaur popping out of the top. Sorry, Rudy. But as for the dinosaurs themselves, both of them boast that traditional hand-sculpted style of work from the early days of Rebor. Starting off our closer look with Rudy, you can see that the head sculpt is heavily inspired by the Tyrannosaurus Rex skull shape of Jurassic Park, complete with your standard amount of shrink wrapping. Meanwhile, features like the classic M-shaped nasal ridge and angular brows have been rounded out, while elements like the eyes have been enlarged and the teeth have been shortened, spaced out, and blunted. All of this works to give the design a more infant-like appearance, with choices like the jet black glossy eye giving it the feel of a puppy. The rest of the face boasts an array of scales of various shapes and sizes across the entire upper and lower mandible, with larger raised ornamental scales running across the nasal bridge and atop the orbits, hinting at the features to come. The piece has been sculpted with a partially open mouth, revealing a light pink, snaking tongue and wrinkled cheek flaps. The roof of the mouth has been decked out with a ribbed palette, and you can see that the underside of the jaw has a very crocodilian look to it, with rectangular scales cropping up between the more rounded scales. When you take in the piece as a whole, you can see that the head feels quite bulbous in relation to the body. Normally this would bother me, but here it adds to the overall childlike appearance, and I enjoy the pseudo 
quote-unquote grin that's been sculpted into the figure's open mouth, giving it an excited aura. And speaking of taking in the rest of the figure, you can see those scales all come together across the skull before giving way to more leathery skin textures at the back of the head. This becomes the primary detail across the rest of the exposed body, adorning the various muscle tones in the neck, shoulders, and along the accentuated dorsum. The throat features all of those examples of sagging, gathering skin you would expect to see, complete with a slight pull to the skin on the left side, as well as some areas of bunched up folds on the right that come with the slight turn of the head. The arms are incredibly long and spindly, and the leathery texture continues down to the fingers which bear the standard scoots above the enamel-like claws, and this is certainly a word of warning should you choose to track one of these down for your collection. This area of the sculpt is incredibly fragile given its thin nature. Indeed, one of the claws on mine is already chipped, something I didn't realize until I was filming, but such is life when you buy used. As a final note concerning the baby itself, you can see that the tail has been sculpted slithering up and out over the edge of the egg, as if it was wrapped around the hatchling and has now fallen loose with the breaking open of the shell. And you can see that it too bears the cross-hatch leathery skin texture. And now for the egg. Rebor once again did a very good job with the texture here, giving it a rough, sandpaper surface that's then been painted in convincing shades of cream and tan. Shining dark brown goo helps define the random cracks and crevices forming as Rudy forces himself free, breaking the egg in the process. Once again, you can see all of these separate layers contained within the shell at the points of breakage and on the pieces that cling to the dinosaur. Taking a look at the paint job, Rebor carried on the Jurassic Park inspiration here as well, with the main body being a familiar mix of golden cream tones and darker browns that mark the baby in a banded pattern. The whole thing has then been given a high gloss, just like the inside of the egg, which makes it look as though it is indeed emerging from that gooey enclosure. The reindeer antlers are pretty straightforward, just a five point rack with more rough texture that's then been painted in shades of brown and even a mossy green. Installing it is a simple matter of just slipping the metal bar over the head just behind the eyes, and now Rudy is all ready for a festive Christmas party. Then of course you're able to remove them and store them away for the rest of the year while your baby T-Rex remains on display. And that was Rudy, the hatchling Tyrannosaurus Rex. Overall, I don't think it's nearly as good as some of their later hatchlings, but I do like it a good deal more than Lock, Stock, and Barrel. And it's nice to see them going all in with the JP aesthetics right down to the color on this one. The fact that we never saw saw a hatchling T-Rex in the films also grants them some wiggle room as they have more of an opportunity to sculpt an artistic interpretation rather than try and fail to create a screen accurate piece. If you're a fan of Jurassic Park or just want a unique dinosaur themed piece for your seasonal decorations, then I could see this being for you. Now let's move on to Jolly the Triceratops, who's looking absolutely adorable as she breaks free from her shelled prison. There's a lot that I like about this piece, most notably the fact that it looks like Jolly is rocking some baby fat. You can see some rolls forming in the neck as she turns her head, as well as around the shoulder blades as her arms bend and rotate. The arms themselves are just a couple of sausage links with their own wrinkles and folds in the elbow and around the fat wrists as they feed directly into the hands. Her back is also arched, which only adds to the illusion of a very rotund infant. As far as the fine details go, you can see that Jolly has been sculpted with an open mouth, which creates all of these pulling wrinkles and folds of skin between the upper and lower mandible. The beak is nice and weathered with various layers of brown paint, and the tongue in there has been given a pebbly surface texture. I'm also a big fan of the horns on this little trike. They're a little more than nubs, sitting up above the big pupper eyes and flaring nostrils, but they're very well painted with a darker base transitioning to a stained cream color at the tip. Meanwhile, the frill features the row of epocipitals, as well as studded rows along the face that divide it into four parts, each marked with a splash of orange. The small frill also bears the small circular scale seen across the top part of the face, and that's potentially the biggest thing I take issue with on the head here, the hard cutoff between the scales and wrinkles in the pseudo cheeks. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it is quite abrupt and jarring. If we move down the body, you can see all sorts of skin folds forming 
below the lower mandible and bunching up in the throat area above the chest. And unlike what we see on Rudy, Locke, Stock, and Barrel, the scale detail actually runs down Jolly's back and onto the arms rather than being forgotten in favor of wrinkly leathery skin. The palms have been sculpted and the nails are done in the same stained brown as the beak. The arrangement of the toes and number of nails is incorrect, but such is life with Rebor. As far as the egg goes, the surface is much smoother than what we saw with Rudy or Lock, Stock, and Barrel, and the layering along the broken edges seems less defined. Still, I don't mind it. I feel like different kinds of birds and reptiles lay different sorts of eggs, some smoother than others, so I'm cool with this. It's well painted with a lot of speckling to give it that eggshell appearance, and the lines of breakage are quite convincing in their random and uneven shapes. I don't know what it is, but there's something about the broken off but still connected pieces that really sells the look of Jolly emerging from her egg in real time, possibly better than any of the other ones I've seen from Rebor. As far as the paintwork goes, you can see that the underbelly is a dirty cream tone with brown washes while the dorsal region boasts a light purple tone augmented by those orange markings on the frill. The eye is also rimmed with more tan and you have got splashes of yellow sprinkled throughout. The whole thing has then been given a light gloss similar to Rudy. To tie it back to Jurassic Park one more time, it almost puts me in mind of the color scheme used for the concept art of the scrapped infant Triceratops, which I do enjoy. As far as her edition of the Santa hat, there's nothing special about it. It's just one of those miniature Santa hats you can find at any hobby store around the holidays. Putting it on is just a matter of pulling it over the frill, and it's a bit of a snug fit, but once it's on there, you have yourself a nice festive baby Triceratops for the holiday season. And there they are together, both Rudy and Jolly, all decked out for Christmas, and if you don't think they look adorable in their festive headgear, then you and I got nothing to say to one another. As far as the size of these two pieces go, Jolly measures roughly 5 inches wide, or just under 13 centimeters, and comes in at just under 6 inches off the ground, or around 15 centimeters. Meanwhile, the base is about 3.5 inches wide, or 9 centimeters. As far as Rudy goes, you can see that he measures just past 7 and a quarter inches off the ground, or roughly 18.5 centimeters tall on his own, while the antlers put him at 9 inches tall, or around 22.5 centimeters. Meanwhile, he measures just under 4 inches wide, or 10 centimeters, and his base is also just under 3.5 inches, or around that 9 centimeter mark. For size comparison, we'll go ahead and bring in lock, stock, and barrel the Velociraptor triplet so that you can get a nice group shot of the initial three club selection pieces released from Rebor. Rudy is fittingly the largest of the bunch, but of the three, I think Jolly is my personal favorite. You may recall that I was pretty unimpressed with the Velociraptors, and whereas I do like Rudy a good deal more, I still think both carnivore sets aren't quite on par with the adorable baby trike. Still, it's a good looking group and perfect for anyone looking to add an extra cute factor to their JP style collection. Now for some other comparisons. First up, here's Rudy with some younger versions of Tyrannosaurus Rex. To start us off, we have the Papo Infant Rex, who looks a little surprised to be seeing a baby of that size. And then we have the Mattel Amber Collection Infant Tyrannosaurus Rex, also known as Buyer's Remorse. And finally, we have PNSO's Logan, who may or may not be a juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex. You all can dish it out in the comments. I'm not touching that one with a 39 and a half foot pole. Not yet, anyway. Meanwhile, for infant comparisons to Jolly, here she is alongside the Papo Infant Triceratops, another more obvious homage to the scrapped JP concept art, and also Hazelnut, the Rebor Scout series Infant Triceratops, boasting a far different color scheme than what we see on Jolly here. Now for some grown-up comparisons. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the adult counterparts from Rebor, and you know when they're posed together, it does look like Jolly is quite concerned about having the hatchling Rex so close nearby. And perhaps this is why. She knows what becomes of Triceratops figures under the Rebor logo, either dead at the claws of a T-Rex or cancelled. But yeah, there you can get an idea of how these figures size up with the adult versions of the species that Rebor have released. And for some other adult comparisons, here is Rudy next to PNSO's Wilson. Gotta give him a positive role model after all. And then we have Jolly alongside the recently reviewed Eofauna Triceratops, the cryptic variant. 
And that was Rebor's Club Selection Hatchling T-Rex and Triceratops, aka Rudy and Jolly. Overall, I find these figures to be quite charming, especially with the festive editions of the hat and antlers. It's nice to have those removable elements so that you can put a little extra Christmas cheer on your display while also having the option to keep the dinosaur pieces out year round, which I certainly plan to do. Even if they're not Rebor's most technically impressive sculpts or even their best club selection offerings, I do still appreciate them simply because they are different. We don't get a lot of hatchling dinosaurs, and if you're a fan of Jurassic Park, then these make for some extra fun given that they're cute reimaginings of our beloved designs. Now if I had to pick one of these three sets, like I've said, it would easily be Jolly. There's just something about the overall balance to the display and the cute baby facets of the design that really works for me. But I want to pass it on to you guys now. Which one is your favorite and what kind of hatching dinosaur would you like to see Rebor do next? Drop a comment down below and as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's review. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again tomorrow when I finally get around to a review of Royal Proportions.